Hey guys, Judge here. Just wanted to uh, create a video and Skyrim smithing tutorial. So this tutorial is really going to take us from level skill 15 to level 100. And I'm going to show you some of the best ways to advance your smithing skills and some of the tips and tricks of advancing your smithing skills. Um, there, I know there's some current debate that the creation of iron daggers is one of the fastest ways to increase your smithing skills. While this may be true for the lower level uh, smithing and lower level characters, this is not going to be the case as you advance in your smithing skills. In other words, the higher your smithing rank becomes, the more daggers it's going to take to level up one level. So before we get, I'm just going ahead and throw some caveats out there. I do have some active effects such as Ancient Knowledge, which is uh, a quest given to me by a Argonian woman in the Riften Docks area and it's a Dwemer quest that upon the completion of the quest she grants this permanent bonus of uh, blacksmithing increasing 15% faster. I also have the Warrior Stone which increases all combat skills by 20% and according to the Skyrim game engine uh, blacksmithing is considered a combat skill so with these two perks attached my skill level is going to increase slightly faster uh, than somebody that did not have these skills or just a base level player so keep that in mind uh, as we're proceeding through this video also should let you know that uh, I currently do not have any uh, fortify smithing armor and I have not taken any fortify smithing potions. So let's go ahead and start. I can show you what I have available to me. Uh, uh, the only thing I don't have available is the Dawn Guard armor and the Stallroom armor only simply because I have not partaken in either one of those uh, downloadable content quest lines to, to get these perks. So I have everything here including the dragon. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and legendary my skill and what legendary my skill simply means is that I'm going to reset my skill from level 100 to level 15 when I do this I'm losing all of my perks and that tree is going to basically reset and it's going to give me some extra perks I think it's one or two extra perks every time you legendary a skill so let's go ahead and look at here um, this is the perk tree um, steel smithing, which means I can create steel armor, weapons, and forges, and so on and so forth. This is the first available perk that, that, that the game will give you. When a blue orb shows, or it's a blue star, because it's a constellation, this means that we have the, met the requisite skills uh, level to purchase this. So I have 11 perks to increase, so I'll go ahead and, and select this one. Once it turns that orange, that yellowish color, um, that means that we have uh, acquired that. Now the red stars or the pink stars simply mean that we don't meet the basic minimum requirements. So for instance, uh, the dwarven smithing, we need a required level 30. And right now we only have a level 15. Let's go ahead and go through the uh, different equipment that you're going to use for the smithing. The first is the Blacksmith's Forge, which you'll see this giant big apparatus here in most of the cities uh, around the Blacksmith's will have something like this. However, if you're in the real world or the open world, you're not going to always come across this in the, except, with a, uh, except occasionally in some of the forts and castles in some of the bigger cities. What you will find, however, is the anvil. So long as you have just the anvil, you are able to create weapons weapons and armor. So you don't need all this fancy stuff, although the cinematics probably look a little cooler. Um, all you need is the blacksmith forge here, the anvil. Now one of the other things that you're going to need to uh, for the smithing it perk is the smelter. The smelter is used to combine ores uh, into ingots. So two corundium ores equals one corundium ingot. And the ingots are what you're going to use to create your uh, weapons and armor. So over here we have the uh, the workbench, and the workbench is used to increase the uh, protection of your armor or improve basically your armors, uh, like your helmets, your chest plates, your greaves, your gauntlets, and so on and so forth. Its counterpart is the grindstone. The grindstone here is what uh, the blacksmiths use to increase your weapons. This can be both your bows, your uh, your uh, handed swords, your axes, so on and so forth. Last but not certainly not least is your tanning rack. The tanning rack is used to turn anything uh, like your cave bear pelts or um, just your leather into leather strips or leather. So uh, let's go ahead and start 
getting some of my ingredients, some of the stuff that I've collected over uh, the last 72 levels. And this is my first safe, and this is where I keep pretty much all of my leathers. So any of my pelts that I have not turned into leather, uh, this is where I keep them in my leather and my leather strips. So let's go ahead and collect all of those. As you can see, we'll go back to the tanning rack and I'll show you how to tan leather. Um, when you first start out the game, it's a pretty basic tutorial that the blacksmith in Riverwood gives you. But here's, here it is. So I had one cave bear pelt that gave me four leathers. Four leathers, or one leather equals four strips. So pretty much one cave bear pelt will give you 16 leather strips which is enough to for at least 16 daggers, at least part of them. So here's my second safe, and this is where I keep all my ingots. All oh, basically the bars of the metal. The only thing I do keep in here is firewood. Um, this is just a, a, a safe place for me to keep this, because you use firewood to create arrows. So I'm going to go ahead and take everything out of this safe. My third safe is where I keep all the ores, which means I haven't used the smelter to turn them into anything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and collect the gold here, and I'm going to collect the silver, and I'm going to collect, mm, I'll just leave the, the iron and corundium. And the fourth safe here is where I keep all my dragon stuff. My dragon bone, dragon scales, and dragon heart scales. Now you probably look at dragon heart scales, those aren't actually available to us currently um, to be able to smith with. Um, basically it's just a different shade color of the dragon scales and what they're used for is a uh, side quest uh, for Tolf Dor. when you reach alteration level 90 he's going to give you a quest to go find dragon heart scales and once you do that he'll, he'll give you uh, a master alteration spell and you have the option of buying the remaining master alteration spells such as mass paralysis the search, this fifth safe here is where I keep all my building materials um, that I would use to build a house or to build uh, any of the furniture within a house if you have the downloadable content hearth fire. Now as you notice I am actually in the basement of one of my houses and this is where I've created all the forging material. So as you can see we're going to go over here to the blacksmith forge and what I really want to do uh, is show you uh, we're at level 15 how many iron daggers is going to take to get to level 16? If my memory serves me correct, I think it's eight iron daggers. Yeah, eight iron daggers to get from 15 to, to 16. And that's pretty impressive, but you can imagine if you're going another uh, 85 levels, 84 levels, that is going to take you a little while to get to uh, level 100. And as you progress, it's going to take you more and more daggers to complete the next level. So pretty much anything that you make, the next time you make it, it's going to be just slightly less than the previous time. So it's going to take you longer. And we'll go ahead and demonstrate that here in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and use the smelter. And I'm going to melt down some gold ingots here, as you guys I saw had 23. Um, and then I'll have an extra one left over, which is fine. And then I've got some silver ones down here. Unfortunately, uh, one of the only weapons in, in um, Skyrim that is, is produced that we cannot create are the silver swords and the silver battle axes and the silver two-handed swords. Um, you can improve them with silver ingots, but you just can't make them for whatever reason. Uh, they were extremely useful in the game Oblivion when you're fighting the undead. Anyways, uh, let's go back to the blacksmith forge, and I want to show you that as a low-level character, or low-level smithing, that jewelry is one of the best ways, if not the fastest way, to level this skill up. So let's go ahead and go to the gold necklace, and, and see how many gold necklaces it's going to take to get up to level 17. So even at three uh, gold necklaces, we're just at level 17, so the fourth one here, as you can see, put us over. So eight uh, iron daggets or four gold necklaces. So you can do the, the, the decision uh, of whether you want to go the iron uh, ingot and leather strip route to make the iron daggers, or if you want to get the, these precious metals and use those. So but if you want to use the precious metals, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, when you first start out, you're going to go over here um, to Markarth, which is the westernmost city in Skyrim. And then you're going to travel east 
to the right here to Colgusker Mine. Colgusker Mine is a gold mine and it is currently filled with Forsworn. And so what you'll need to do is you'll need to clear out the Forsworn, then you'll be able to have free reigns on the gold. Now, if my memory serves me correctly, it takes about 30 game days for the gold to replenish. Now the ticker starts over if you visit the mine too early. So if you visit the mine on day 27, the ticker starts over again and you have to wait another 30 game days. So just be cognizant of that. Pay attention to that when the last time you visited a, one of these mines. Um, so let's go down here and go back to the jewelry and select uh, one of the jeweled uh, jewelry. So we'll go to the gold, uh, the emerald ring right here. When you add the precious gemstone to the creation of jewelry, your smithing will increase much faster than just the creation of a jeweled necklace. So look at the jewel, let's go to the necklace and see how it increases to halfway to level 18. And let's see if we can't get it all the way to 18. Okay, so we're just past 18. So now look at the emerald ring here. The Emerald Ring took us almost all the way to 19, so one uh, jeweled ring took us up almost an entire level. It's probably at about 75% of the level. So as you can see, we're going to go ahead and run through these jeweled uh, items here and increase um, our, uh, our, our blacksmithing skill as, as much as we can here. Now a lot of people like to take the gems and they like to sell them when they get them, which is a good source of cash, but when you get a flawless sapphire and you put it onto a silver ingot and make a uh, silver sapphire necklace, you're going to get more money out of it anyways and you're going to increase your smithing skills. So you might as well just go ahead and save them so you can uh, ante up your, your smithing skills and get a little bit more money out of them than just selling the gemstone by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and finish out the... Um, the jewelry here before we go back and look at the skill tree. Some of you are probably wondering where I've got all this material, and it's simply because I've, I've hoarded it over the last 72 levels. Um, pretty much I, I create my armor, I enchant my armor, and do whatever I need to do. Um, and then I just, just keep everything in case I want to wear, have my companions wear a specific armor, or so on and so forth. So let's go down here to the iron daggers again, and let's see how many daggers it's going to take to get to for an entire level. So we're here at level 40, so let's see how we got one. Okay, so if my math was correct, it took us 14 daggers to get up to level 41 from level 40 as opposed to level 15 to level 16 where it only took 8 daggers. So you can see it's taking a little more daggers to get up that level. So I don't really suggest that you continue making the iron daggers. I think the iron daggers are attractive because of the, the minimum amount of requirements it takes. The iron ingots and the leather strips are two of the most common uh, resources you can use for the smithing which is why a lot of people like favoring the iron daggers because they're relatively cheap to make um, but it's going to take you a lot longer so let's go ahead and look at our skill tree um, we should be about right for the, um, the dwarven here we go dwarven smithing let's go ahead and open up that and everything on the right is going to be your heavy armor uh, your orc armor your ebony Daedric and the dragon armor is at the top which is both light and heavy armor depending on what you want to do everything on the left here is going to be your light armor so we'll go ahead and pick these perks um, so let's go ahead and look so it took us 14 daggers to get to one level so let's go down to the dwarven which we just opened up and go down to dwarven bow now dwarven bow is similar in the fact that it only takes a few resources uh, the iron ingot and the metal ingot the dwarven metal ingot now unlike all the other ores that are out there in skyrim the metal ingot dwarven metal ingots um, you will not find an ore mine for those you're actually going to have to go into the dwarven ruins 
and pick up some metal and you and go to the smelter and then you can melt it into the dwarven ingots. The same is true with the steel ingots. You actually have to have corundum and um, iron ores and combine those to make the steel. There are no steel mines in Skyrim. So be careful if you're looking to make uh, steel armor or steel plated armor and you've got corundum and you've got st and you've got iron ores that you don't just make just corundum ingots and iron ingots because once they become ingots you can't undo them. You can only create steel ingots uh, from the ores of both those. So let's look at the dwarven bow. So so four dwarven bows will rank us up an entire level. So you know 14 daggers or four dwarven bows. I'm going to go ahead and take my four dwarven bows simply because it takes less time. So go ahead and ramp this up to level 45 or 50 or so. Uh, looks like I got quite a bit of dwarven metal here. If my memory serves me correctly, uh, level 50 is when the orcish armor becomes available to us in the skill perk tree, so we'll go ahead and do that. Alright, so okay, we're already at level 50. So we're halfway to uh, our goal of 100, so I think we're probably going to make it. So as you can see, uh, the steel plate and the scaled armors became available to us in the light armor tree and the orcish armor became available to us in the heavy armor tree let's go back now if you notice that we were creating the bows and they they hopped up our levels pretty quickly but let's look at the dwarven armor if you create the dwarven armor any armor in any of the armor trees your skill level is going to hop up a lot faster now part of it is simply because it requires more resources and this really detracts a lot of people um, from wanting to create a bunch of mass production armors simply because it takes up a lot of resources but um, I've gathered enough resources for this video so uh, I'm not really too concerned about the deplenishing of my resources so let's go ahead and you can see um, three and a half almost four uh, armors will get us entire level. So let's go ahead and bring this up to level uh, 65 or 70 or so. got bored and go ahead and stop at 60 so let's go down to the orcish and do the same thing the orcish bow is kind of similar to that the dwarven bow where it requires two orc ingots and one iron ingot to make so it's just kind of the same level as you can see it doesn't really move my smithing perk up a whole lot with the creation of the bow it, it jumps it up just about the same level as a dwarven bow does so I wouldn't recommend um, using uh, your orc ingots to create uh, dwarven or to create orc bows just go ahead and use them to create your armor if you've got them available because um, you can see uh, you hop your armor up pretty quick we should land right around 68 or 69 by the time that we're done maybe even in the level 70 by the time we run out of orc ingots We'll go ahead and create a bow and just finish off the working it's already at level 71 almost approaching 72 so by this time our our glass armor should be available to us it decreases just a little bit faster than the dwarven armor at this point. Let's go ahead and bring this up as high as I can. You can see we're approaching level 80. 
uh, relatively quickly since the start of this video. We started at level 15. Now keep in mind that you're probably not going to have the same amount of resources that I've had or that I have. So it's going to take you a little longer. But as you can see, um, these are the kinds of items you really want to focus on trying to make to increase your smithing skill. We do some battle axe and let's see, gauntlets. And we're out of glass. So we're at level 84, almost level 85. So by this time our ebony should have opened up for us. Now the thing about the ebony and the Daedric armors is they both require ebony metals. The only difference is the Daedric armor actually requires uh, the Daedra heart. Now the Daedra heart, there's only a few places in Skyrim that you can find a Daedra heart. One of the best places is the alchemy shops. They don't have them often, so when you do run across an alchemy shop that does have a Daedra heart, I would go ahead and pick it up and keep it in your inventory and store it in whatever safe house that you may have. So let's go down here to the ebony and let's go ahead and look at the bow. Unfortunately, it doesn't require any iron. It just is three ebony ingots and ebony is one of the rarest metals that you're going to find in Skyrim. In fact, the only place that you have an ebony mine that has a plenty amount of ebony is outside one of the Orcus strongholds just uh, to the southeast of Winterhold. So let's go ahead and go to the armor here and create some ebony armor. This should bring us pretty close to level 92 or so, maybe even a little higher by the time that we're done with this. Now, there's a lot of people that like to use the training, um, like the, you know, the Forge Master and Whiterun, the Grey Main, and um, you can use training if you'd like. Um, yeah, for, me, for me, I think it's a waste of gold, especially with all the amount of resources that you have in the open world in Skyrim. So there really isn't a need to do it. I would save your training for skills such as the restoration or destruction and the magic skills. Or perhaps if you don't like to pickpocket, uh, use those skills there. Because um, those skills are a little tougher to, to develop um, for novice players. So I've pretty much run through um, everything up to 96 and I'm out of ebony. And I probably could go to my little storage and get the get some um, ebony ore and turn it into ore and, and create some more. But what I'm going to ahead and go ahead and do is come down here to Nordic, um, see what I got here available that I can I can make to get us up to uh, 100. So let's see if this is going to hop us up any uh, a little bit. So we'll go to the great sword. It does a little bit better. So we'll do that. Now the Nordic armor is available only after you've acquired the um, Dragonborn downloadable content. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here at level almost 100 because what I want to show you is that the, the um, workbench and the grindstone will actually increase your smithing skills. I don't know uh, off the top of my head if it's as equal amount as creating your own armor or if it just increases it. By a little bit but if you can see here I'm gonna go ahead and craft some legendary armor and do this twice and it looks like it brought it up to my 100 where I'm looking for now level 100 is the highest level that you're going to be able to get just based on the tree so let's go ahead and look at the tree and as you can see we blew past um, the Daedric armor which was level 90 and now the dragon armor is available to us at level 100 so having done that, the only way to get your skill past 100 uh, for smithing is through the use of enchanted armor, which I have in my possession a gold necklace here that in weapons and power improve 61% better. So let's go ahead and go back to the table here and show you the, the armor here. I made a level it's armor rating 155 with a value of 933 as opposed to the base. So let's look with this special enchanting armor, um, 182. So you go from 155 down here to 182 just by wearing that necklace. Now there are up to four items that you can use for fortify enchanting. I don't recall which items off the top of my head. 
but basically it'll compound the, the skill rating. You can also use the Fortify Enchanting uh, potions, I mean the Fortify Smithing potions, and this will also increase it. So for instance, um, I'm going to use this potion which increases it by 6,226% better. So I'll drink that and I'll come over here and it goes from 86 to 5,900 uh, damage uh, rate as far as protecting you from, from damage. You can also see that my armor is now worth 43,000, so you can pretty much buy an entire uh, Forge Master's inventory and sell him one piece of armor, and you've basically just done a fair swap, which is one of the best ways to uh, get uh, as many resources such as I have uh, in my saves. This is exactly what I did, is I leveled up some armor, went in, bought all his miscellaneous supplies, and then just sold him one piece of armor and I was done with it. Now I will create a separate video on how to master the enchanting and alchemy uh, skills that you, so you can do pretty much the same thing. Um, you'll also notice that my potions here, this Fortify Smithing is, is pretty ridiculous as far as how much it'll improve it. Now you gotta be really careful um, that you don't wanna get too hyped up on this only because um, when you come over here to the, this bench over here, and uh, the grindstone and start increasing your damage output it can get to the point where you're one hit killing and while that's fun uh, for exploring and makes ease exploring a lot easier it's going to hinder you if you're trying to rank up your your bow skills or your um, your one-handed or your two-handed because the one-handed two-handed and bow skills are based on uh, strikes on enemy characters so if you hit one strike one kill then it's going to take you a lot longer and a lot more enemies you're gonna to have to go through as opposed to taking 10 or 15 swipes at an enemy before they finally fall um, so your skill is going to rank up a little faster so I really don't like using the fortify smithing potions on my weapons uh, just because it takes some of the fun out of the game now I will say I do carry one weapon that I have um, this attached to and this is this one right here um, this is my my go-to war axe pretty much if I'm trying to like for instance I'm working on my dragon bone bow and I'm trying to rank this up my my bow skills and if I'm facing a dragon um, or if I'm in a rush and I want to do something or I'm, I'm trying to finish a quest with a certain amount of time and the dragon comes in which they always come in at least uh, when you least expect them this is when I go over to my Ebony War Axe and I just one hit, one kill the dragon. So, just keep one on hand if you have to play that way just for saving yourself some time in the long run, so on and so forth. So that's pretty much the smithing, the ins and outs of the smithing, how to rank up your character pretty quick in the smithing and, uh, industry. Um, as if you're a new player, this is one of the skills that I certainly would think that you would need to focus on. Number one, it ranks up your level a lot faster um, for a low-level character. And with the increase in, in armors and weapons, you're going to be a better defensible position and you're going to be a better attacker. Uh, so you're not going to die nearly as quickly as if you were to focus, uh, let's say, solely on some of the other skills such as pickpocket and so on and so forth, which will come... Uh, which will not be very handy for you if you're in a cave full of um, frost trolls. So um, this is definitely a skill that I would work on as soon as you can and just take some of the tips and things that you learned here. And if you like the video, just hit like and subscribe to the channel. And I appreciate you watching.